Hey, how's it going, YouTubers? Thank you for tuning into another episode of Excel VBA is Fun. My name is Daniel Strong, and today we're going to dive right into a sample database. As you can see, I have uh, plenty of items here. There's an order date. Uh, each has an order number. And we're going to focus today on the quantity. We're going to have a macro that goes through each line and... Um, yeah, depending on which line, which row we select, it's going to take and analyze the toys. Uh, excuse me, it'll analyze the category and the last name. So if we wanted to know the total number of quantity that uh, people with the last name of Crockett have ordered, that is the current category toys, it would calculate that up. So let's get started. I'm going to hit Alt F11. As you can see in my macro here, <coughs> I've already given it a name, sum total, and I've already declared the DB sheet as a worksheet, and I've given <coughs> it the appropriate label. DB is the name I named this sheet, just to make it short and sweet. So we're going to begin by how do we create a loop? Well, we're going to do a 4x equals loop. So let's begin with that. Uh, actually, we're going to get the last row, and we'll call this, um, we can just call LR. LR equals, and you remember that we're going to take the sheet name, dot cells. We're going to get the rows, dot count, comma, one, dot end, XL up, dot row. And if you have no idea what this is, you may want to check out uh, one of our previous in uh, videos in the uh, basic series. It tells about how to determine the last row, depending on whichever column you want to look at. We're looking at column one. Okay, we're going to get the last row. It's going to say 33 on this database. Just to test it out, let's put a stop right there and hit F5. If I hit F8 to run this line of code, sure enough, last row is 33. So we're on the right track. Now we're going to continue on. I'm going to go ahead and complete that code here. Now we have the last row. We're going to say for x equals, and we're going to say we don't want to start with row 1 necessarily. We're going to say from 2 to whatever LR is, and right now it's 33. And at the end, we're going to say next x because we're planning ahead. Okay. Yeah, I've gone ahead and indented all three lines in my code here, so we'll know that they're within these two boundaries. Okay, so the first thing we want to analyze, or rather, <coughs> let's backtrack again. We do know that we're going to need to know what the category name is, so we'll just call it cat. Category is going to, oh, I forgot. I'm getting way ahead of myself here. Uh, one thing, whenever you have a macro that you're running, anywhere you, you select, you can take the selection dot row or selection dot column and it will give you the number appropriate for that. So what we want to do is we want to stick with whatever the row that we're on that we're selected on. So let's get the selected row. We'll call it we'll call it cell row. We could just put SR or something like that. Selected row is selection dot row. And you'll see that that will bear the number 17 since we have 17 row 17 selected. We can use cell row later and that'll be pretty cool. So now that we have the selected row we can determine the category and I'm just going to make a little note by putting a comma at the beginning. Category and we'll call it cat equals <coughs> db sheet dot cells and what is the column, or excuse me, what is the row? It's going to be cell row. <coughs> That's a variable that changes. And the column index for the category is 1, 2, 3, 4. So cell row comma 4. So that's our category. And we need another one for the last name. Last name. Okay, I made my little note with a apostrophe. L name, we'll call it L name equals db sheet dot cells cell row comma selected row comma one two three four five okay closing up with parentheses so let's run it this far <coughs> 
if I have five, I see that category is clothing for the selected. And sure enough, if I hit F8, L name is Smith uh, for row 17. Smith, clothing. Yep, we're good to go. Now let's run what's going to happen with our loop here. We're going to say for each X, we're going to say if dbsheet.cells x comma four equals category and db sheet dot cells x comma five equals l name then enter indent then <coughs> well then we'll proceed what we're going to do is just put a simple counter. We could just say S or C or something. C equals C plus, and then we need the actual, um, the number of quantity. So that'll be column three. DB sheet dot cells X comma uh, quantity is row, column three. So what we're saying here is, and then we'll close it up with an end if. Okay. So every time that this is true, every time that the category is the same as our selected category and the uh, whatever that is is the same as our last name, then we want the counter, which we've given the variable C, is the last counter plus uh, whatever the quantity is. And that'll add up all our quantity. Let's see what happens. Nope, oh, nope, nope, nope. Let's see, we're on five, six, seven. Row 8, well, let's just put a stopper here and see where it stops us, F5. Looks like it stopped us at 14. Oh, so on 14 there's clothing, clothing and Smith right there. This will be interesting. F8, C equals C plus uh, DB sheet dot cells X3 is 1067 on row 14, 1067, okay. Uh, so, oh, we have a we have a bug we need to deal with here. Oh, maybe they don't want us to use C. Let's maybe C already has a value in Visual Basic. Let's use something more creative. Let's say counter equals counter plus that, and let's see how they like that. Yes, they like it just fine. Counter is 1067 currently. I'm gonna hit F5. Okay, my marker had it stop only when the conditions are met when it's true. So where do we stop at? Uh, row 17, that's the selected row anyway. Counter is going to be counter plus 342. Yep, okay, that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and in, uh, uh, we'll put a stopper right here at the end. I, I'm eager to see what happens once it runs all the way to the last row. So uh, counter is going to be 1409 total. It looks like there was only those two rows that had Smith and clothing in them. So that's very interesting. At the very end of our thing, instead of stopping it, let's put a message box that says total quantity for, end quote, ampersand, that's going to join our variable uh, for CAT, that's our category up here, ampersand, more text, so we start a quote, uh, total quantity for the category and space quote space ampersand we'll put the L name and more text uh, total quantity for category and Smith is space quote ampersand last thing we're going to join is counter that was our variable that ended up being 1400 something. So let's run, let's backtrack and we will go to our message box. I'm going to hit F8. It says total quantity for clothing and Smith is 1409. This was counter, this was cat, and this was L name. So our variables shine through in the message box. Let's, uh, let's have some fun with this now. I'm going to click on a different row. So this one should pick up all the quantity for food and Munster in this whole table. Let's do that. Uh, Alt F8 brings up our macro list 
run that one. Total quantity for food and Munster is 1364. Well, that was boring. Let's create. Let's create a situation where. Let's see, clothing and bush. I'm just going to copy and paste out a few areas here. And we'll run it now. Clothing and bush. I'm going to click on this one and hit Alt F8. And let's run that. Total quantity for clothing and bush is 5,300. So it added this one, this one, this one. And of course, uh, some of you are saying, well, you could just do that with a sum product formula. You could use a sum ifs. Um, formula and you can actually do that in VBA. We're not going to get into that. <clears throat> I will give you a little preview though of something cool that you can you can use worksheet functions by using application dot worksheet function and by the time you type W R K S you can hit tab dot and there's a bunch of uh, worksheet functions like dollar or dot sum or some if or some ifs. Some product is real tricky in VBA. Um, anyway, there's a lot you can do in there. There's a lot of built-in worksheet functions that you can do in here by saying, you know, uh, variable name equals, and then go to application worksheet function dot uh, whatever VLOOKUP, and then put your arguments in there. So it's absolutely possible. We will get into that later, though, in some more advanced videos. Uh, anyway, I hope this makes sense what we've done here, and thank you so much for watching.